Hi my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. I have such a fun, exciting video for you today. At least I'm excited about it and I think it's fun. What I'm gonna do is talk about all of the trends that were in style the year Adam was arrested while I do my makeup the way that was in style back then. I'm doing it because number one, so you can see how long it's been and how far we've come while we look back on those trends, while we see how long ago that it actually was and two because that was when I was in my fun prime years and we all get to relive that. I've seen a few other YouTubers do this video. I'm just putting my own spin on it. So if you're interested in seeing how I do my makeup and we relive the style of the early 2000s, ah, it was a crazy time, then please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I'm the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. We don't glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here, but I will teach you how to make the best out of this really painful and hopefully one shot deal. I've had this idea forever. I also saw that other YouTubers kind of did this and it was a really fun spin, but also half of them were probably 10 early 2000s and meanwhile I was in my college fun going out years. That's the year Adam was arrested so I totally forgot about it. I had this idea probably I don't know a year ago. Yesterday I filmed my birthday video where I answered a whole bunch of your assumptions about me while I filmed myself doing a makeup look that I wore a couple of videos ago that you guys loved. In that tutorial I used some glitter on my eyelids and I washed it off last night but everybody knows how glitter is it gets everywhere so I woke up I had glitter all over my chest all over my face and it was so reminiscent of back in the early 2000s when body glitter was like everything <laughs> my god I have stories for days so I thought you know what no better time than to do this video so I call the early 2000s the sex in the city era because that's when the show came out Everybody followed their street style. Cosmopolitans were the biggest drink. Everybody ordered a Cosmo, all the girls, which is just a martini, it's red. Self tanner and tanning beds were the thing. Back then, I actually went to a tanning salon when they first opened, it was like they first hit the scene. The guy that owned the salon told me that I should tan every single day because it was really good for me. Yeah, so I'm going to start with foundation that is way too dark for my skin, but that's what we did back then, we tanned, and then we tanned some more and we all looked like Oompa Loompas. It's actually coming out lighter on camera than it is in real life, but this is really dark for me. We just went all in on the bronzer, on the tanner, on everything. I don't ever remember wearing concealer, so we're gonna skip that one. I'm gonna add a little bit of this glow stuff because bronzer just came out then and we bronzed ourselves to death. And everything was about icy, bronzy, glittery, sparkly, you name it. We were a mess. I'm also trying to block out my eyebrows. Back then, we plucked our eyebrows to death. I call them the comma eyebrows. We barely had any hair there, and I'm not plucking my eyebrows just for a YouTube video, so I'm gonna try to get rid of them with foundation and draw them in. While that is drying, you just bronzed your face up, girl. You just went in with the bronzer. The thing about that era too was that there was no such thing as blending your makeup. Nope, no such thing. So we just looked like hot messes all day long. We used to bronze like this. This is how I bronzed my face back then. <laughs> they told us to, oh, they told us, that's it. They told us to make a three on our face. That's what we did. You made a three. Getting in there, good girl. And then when you're done with that, you would go right here because that's where, of course, the sun hit you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then when you did your blush, I'm using the sample I got. Oh geez. Blush was pretty bright and we put it low. They told you to put it right here on the apples of your cheeks and that's what we did. This is a very Sarah Jessica Parker Sex in the City blush placement. You go right down here. Not much blending going on. We never blended. There was no such thing. Let's try these eyebrows now. Right here. And just like a little line. Oh well, I have too much eyebrow, but I'm not taking my eyebrows off. For our eyes, I'm gonna go with the iconic Paris Hilton pink dress, high top sneakers with her feet out of them like they were heels, but they were high top sneakers. And the laces were wrapped around her ankles because you know, it's not a tripping hazard if you do that. And she had on this icy eyeshadow. 
eyeshadow was white and icy and it was all just one swatch of color and a lot of black eyeliner and then mascara. I'm just gonna go in with this light icy color right here from this old Wet n Wild palette held together with a rubber band. I'm just gonna use one big fluffy makeup brush. Oh, you know what I have to do? I'm gonna take this white and I'm gonna prime because otherwise you're not gonna see the colors. I mean, technically I could just use this all over and this is a very early 2000s look. Oh, I'm sexy. I'm moving on to this because you couldn't see the other one. Ah, there it is. There was no rhyme or reason to this. You just slapped all this on. The more the better. Probably had to make up for all that room between your eyelids and where you had no eyebrows. So there's a lot of real estate there to fill in with all this icy white makeup. I'm gonna take this glitter because everything was about glitter and I'm gonna go underneath my eye with it because we always did crazy stuff like that. Oh yeah, baby, there it is. Yep. Let's pop on the inner corner too. We need this icy blue to pop. Next up, we went in hard. We were raccoons in the early 2000s. We piled on the black eyeliner. Then you took your eyeliner and you did a really thick eyeliner on the top of your eye. We didn't really wing it then. I just accidentally winged it, but we just went across our whole entire eye. Nice. And then, like we didn't really do lashes back then. So we're just going to pop on some mascara. That's all we did to our lashes. Yep. It wasn't a complete makeup look until you got mascara all over wherever you didn't want it. Cause you had to put a lot of layers of mascara on. Okay, good enough. What we did for lips back then, one of two things. So in the late 90s, it was really popular to outline your lips with a darker color and then do the inside with an icy light color, which is actually coming back in right now. I do it. So we're not gonna do that look because it's kind of back on trend. Instead, what was equally as popular, or if you were really cool, like in the Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie Club, everything was just icy. It's just a very pale, light wash of color, and then, or not color, and then a ton of gloss. The stickier, thicker amount of gloss on your lips, the better. You wanted to be able to see them from outer space. You wanted to be able to look like you could go ice skating on your lips, girl. Yes. I'm gonna go in with this, about right? You know, wash out your lips because your skin's so orange. You gotta wash those babies right out. And let your tan shine. I'll go in with a little of this, gloss it up a little bit. These lips are so good. For my hair, what was in style for hair was we did highlights were in, but chunky highlights where it was thick stripes. We did black and then the highlights were usually either white blonde or orange stripes. Or what was really cool, I think Christina Aguilera started this. We did bleached white on top of your head, not highlights, literally the top half was bleached and the bottom half was black. So when you put it down, it kind of looked like you had highlights on the bottom. That was really popular. Also a pixie cut was really popular because Meg Ryan made that popular back in the day. I remember I had just broken up with my boyfriend and my hair was probably the length that it is now. I went to the mall because that's where you got your hair cut when you were 20 years old. And I told the guy, cut it off, all of it, just chop it off. And I got this really short little pixie cut where they had to use a razor on the back. It took me about five years to grow that out. But what I'm gonna do with my hair today is I'm gonna do the iconic Sarah Jessica Parker carry opening image of Sex in the City where her hair is back like this because I have Sarah Jessica Parker hair although my hair is air dried because I was in the pool yesterday. Remember these clips? I found this in my mom's stuff when I was cleaning her stuff out. Just like this. Oh yes, girl. There was crimping going on back then. That was huge. But this was bigger the better. Let me just fix this hair and then we're gonna talk about other trends in the early 2000s. Flat irons had also just become a thing so poker straight hair, like fry your hair or poker straight. We all flat ironed our hair to death. It is a miracle that all of us had more than one hair on our head by 2005. And then if you wanted to wear your hair natural, if you had wave in your hair and you wanted to keep your wave and you didn't want to go pin straight, if you wanted to be a rebel and not go down the flat iron road, then you would put half of a mousse bottle or gel in your hair and it was crunchy and it was that wet look. And I remember I used to use deep gel 
from the dollar store. Rave parties were huge back then. I worked at an after hours club and it was just little candy flippers and rainbow colors, tons of accessories, candy necklaces, candy bracelets and all different kinds of beads, all different colors, rainbow was in, up your arms. I look like I'm ready for the club in 2000 right now, except body glitter was a huge thing. I remember my best friend and I, we were living in North Carolina, I went to college, and she and her husband wanted to drive to where he was from in Oklahoma. And we were like, we're from Jersey. So we <laughs> went to a hotel room there and we're getting ourselves ready to go out that night with a whole bunch of people from Oklahoma. And they walked into the hotel room and it looked like a glitter bomb had gone off in the sink from the two of us getting ready. We were just going out to a backyard cookout and we looked like this decked out body glitter oh my god we were uh, the hot mess express also body jewelry was just coming in every girl had their belly button pierced and also belly chains and sometimes the belly chain would attach to your belly ring which uh, danger alert I, did I ever do that? I don't know if I ever did. I'm sure I did that. Playboy, the brand Playboy was all the rage. If you had like the Playboy bunny logo on your clothes. Also, <laughs> having a sticker, because tanning was huge. Tanning beds were all the rage. So you would get a sticker and put it on somewhere. I would always put it like on my hip or right where your hip bone, like that V is in your hip bone or right on my stomach somewhere. Because you wanted to see how tan you were, but you obviously didn't want tan lines. Although back then, hanging your thong out of your pants was big. I used to tan a thong line into my backside. Oh boy. Also, it was very cool to have stickers that were, or like body tattoos that were made out of jewels because we'd be dazzled and blinged out everything. Everything had bling on it. The more, the better. Oh my God, and we used hair chopsticks. Remember those hair chopsticks that you would put your hair into a bun or a ponytail and then you would put the chopsticks in there to hold it in? Oh my God. Hair accessories were huge. The more, the better. The more colorful, the better. Depending on what your scene was, if you were a rave kid, you did that. Or if you were a Sex in the City street style, you did more of this type of look. Back to the body. <laughs> that was the era of the lower back tattoo on girls, otherwise known as, I'm sorry, but it's what it's called, the tramp stamp. I always wanted one. I literally had the design picked out. It was six roses in a circle one for each of my siblings. They were all pink and one of them was gonna be blue and I never got it. My friends and I were gonna go and then we would chicken out, but instead we got our bellies pierced, my roommate and I at the time. In high school, I pierced my own belly with a safety pin, but I couldn't go deep enough so my body actually rejected it and pushed it out, so I had a scar. In the early 2000s when belly rings were all the rage and everybody had one because crop tops and shirts that were like the size of a napkin became huge. Actually, there's a picture of Christina Aguilera that's very famous where she's wearing a scarf tied up like this as her shirt and this teeny tiny little mini skirt. We wore no clothes. We wore teeny tiny little clothes. So our bellies were always showing and we needed belly jewelry because everything else was bedazzled and sparkly. Our belly buttons were gonna be like that too. Okay, let's get to the fun stuff, the fashion. Number one thing that sticks out to me is we wore the lowest of low hip hugger pants. Hip huggers from the 70s had nothing on the early 2000s. Low cut flare jeans were my go-to. I remember one time, I'm God, I was such a bitch back then. I had walked into the kitchen. I was wearing a pair of really low cut. I think mine were sweatpants that day because I was just chilling. They were hot pink with my little Playboy bunny sticker that had been tanned into my body hanging out so hot and my thong hanging out the backside because Christina Aguilera made that popular and oh I'll tell you a story about that in a second and I walked into the room and my mom goes you're disgusting pull those pants up I could see your I was such a brat I go no you can't she said yes I can I said you can't because I don't have any I thought my old school Italian Catholic mother was going to beat me into oblivion. It was the weirdest time, bright colors, so many layers, 
Jeans with a dress or a skirt over it was really hot. Ashley Tisdale was the queen of that. Thongs were hanging out. We would match our thongs to our clothes because they would be hanging out. We loved house music. Glow sticks were in then. I was so good at swinging those glow sticks. Von Dutch anything. The Von Dutch hats that went sideways. Armani exchange was huge, especially for the guys. Juicy velour jumpsuits were so hot and you had juicy written across your ass. I completely forgot to add here that you always wore your Juicy Velour tracksuit with Ugg boots and you got extra cool points if you mix matched a pair with your sister. Instead of a strapless bra, you would just wear plastic bra straps hanging out of your clothes. I asked you guys to send me your cringiest moments on our Invisible Shackles page because I love to include you guys in my video. A t-shirt with a tie, very Alvaro Levine. These teeny tiny little shirts that stretched so you could get them on. So it was like a doll shirt, but then you put it on. I don't remember those, but a lot of people said they had those. For shoes, I wore one pair of shoes. I hope I can find a picture of them. They were the Steve Madden. It was a wedge and your foot slid in it. And it was kind of like if you take a boot and you cut from the ankle part off and you just have the shoe part of the boot, those were the shoes we wore and we loved them and they were platform and they didn't go with anything, but you wore them to everything. I would always wear them either with flare jeans or flared black pants and a teeny tiny little cropped top and thought I was the hottest thing. You know, when you were younger and you were going out and you would call your friends and be like, what are you wearing out tonight? Every time my uniform was black pants and a tank top, what are you wearing? And my friend would be like, me too. That's all we ever wore. I wish I could find my photos from back in the day, but I made a photo album for my ex-boyfriend. And I remember I dropped it off and I told myself, if I'm meant to have those pictures in my future, meaning we would get married, then I will have them in the future. And I lost them all and I wish I had them because, oh my God, the gems that I must've had in that photo album to show you guys and I don't anymore. Last thing I wanna to touch on before I FaceTime all of my friends to make them laugh with this makeup and then hop in the shower because it's so sticky on my face is technology. Back then, not everybody had their own computer. AOL was on the scene and AIM dial-up, beep, boop, 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 beep, 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 was a thing. If you had a computer, most likely you had tons of viruses on there from downloading stuff from LimeWire. There was no social media back then. AOL was all of our emails and AIM was our instant messenger. Blockbuster turned down a partnership with a dumb little video subscription service called Netflix. In 2001, Xbox was released by Bill Gates and Apple released the first iPod. I'm saving the worst for last because I hated them. The most hot phone at the time was a Nextel. Do you guys remember the Nextels? They were phones, but they were also walkie talkies. And all of the drug dealers had one at that point because they thought if you didn't use the phone and you just used the walkie talkie feature back and forth, that your call couldn't be tapped. And so that's how all of the friends I was hanging out with at that time communicated with one another. And that's exactly the phone that Adam had when he was arrested. I still tease him about that damn Nextel. So this was a fun, lighthearted way for me to talk about something really serious. It's been so long since Adam's been gone. And he was talking to a federal prosecutor one time that came in to tour the facility with a group of people where Adam was housed. After the event, they came and they were talking and the prosecutor said to Adam as he was telling him about his case and his unjust sentence, he said, how long have you been in? And at that point, I think Adam had been in maybe 17 years. And when he told the man that, the guy goes, eh, like, eh, you got some more time to do. And it really bothered Adam because in the feds, they hand out a 10 year sentence like it's nothing, like it's nothing. And he always says, I want you to think about what life was like 20 years ago. Google was barely a thing. We were all using AIM. There was no social media. There was no YouTube. We didn't have smartphones. We barely had our own cell phones. This is what we looked like. And you're going, eh. You could do more time. A baby that was born the day Adam was arrested can now legally drink, is a legal adult, 
that is graduating college. So yeah, this is fun and lighthearted, but this is a really serious thing. And I just wanted to show you how long Adam's been gone and how he's gonna be my Encino man when he gets home. I wanna know from you guys, where were you in the early 2000s? Were you in grade school? Were you born yet? Were you partying it up in the clubs at the raves all hours of the night like I was? Were you sporting this style? Did you not even wear makeup yet? Tell me everything in the comments below. If you guys liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna watch another one of my videos, just click one of the videos on the screen. Make sure you subscribe because look how much fun we have over here and you made it this far. So obviously we're vibing. Click that little button there or you could always do so by clicking the red box below. I love you guys. I hope you had fun with me and I'll see you in the next one.